I've got personal great history with Carl Froch, but I would have to say he's an Anthony Joshua hater. Mm. Pro boxing fans, we are here in Riyadh. It is fight week. Eddie, here. this is a big one. How are you, first of all? How's I'm things? doing really good. I got in very early this morning. Okay. A bit long these days, aren't they? I mean, what time's the arrivals tonight? 8.30, 9, 9 o'clock? Yeah, 9 o'clock. And it's 5.30. What time's bedtime for you? Oh, bloody hell, about 10 o'clock these days. Um, I'm trying to, I've got the whoop, you see, so I'm trying to get my sleep in, but I don't sleep very well out here, actually. This is the one time zone that I really struggle on. So, yeah. Let's talk about your charge. Uh, Dimitri Bimmel, mm. um, look, this is the fight that I think a lot of boxing fans in particular have been wanting for the last three, four yeah. years. Finally here. Just talk to me about Bimmel. A lot of people are saying, look, he's got all the experience, been through it, done that. Last couple of performances might have not been um, tantalizing, mm. but what do you make of his... his, his I, I, I just think that Bivol fights to his opposition. Okay. You know, if you look at him in, I mean, Gilberto Ramirez was a good example, just schooled him. Canelo won comfortably in that fight, but he's going to have to put in an incredible performance to beat Arta Betaviev. You know, I think it's the best fight in boxing. I think that um, I've said in quite a few interviews, like when you fight Betaviev, it's like a ticking time bomb, yep. and you've got to slow the clock down. Do you know what I mean? To beat him, and if you can't, he's just going to catch you up. Boom, and you need. Like, the only person that can beat Betabiev is Dimitri Bivol. Okay. And I think the only person that can beat Bivol is Betabiev. Do you know what I mean? So that's why it's such a great fight. It's the very best in the sport and, you know, it's a great clash of skulls. Those. You've called Arthur Betabiev arrogant before. What, 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 well, what it was, was I did that after the first press conference. Okay. Because he got asked questions and he went, yep. And I'm like, as a promoter, when you fly a fighter over and you present him to the media and you, you got like Addy up there, whoever it was, Dev, trying to, you know, engage and present the fight, I just find that quite disrespectful, to be honest with you. Like, I don't think he's an arrogant person necessarily, but I find what I was referring to was that. Okay. Like, that's no good for anybody. You may not care, but we have an obligation to speak to the media to talk about the fight and I just thought it was a bit like is that his personality though is that him maybe but it doesn't matter if that's your personality or not like believe it or not there are actually times when I don't really want to fucking do the 900th interview of the day yeah. but guess what it's part of my job and part of his job is to speak to the media and engage with the media and listen he may say I don't care but we care because we're paying the money to sell the fight. And, you know, if, if you don't get eyeballs on this fight, everybody's wasting their time and their money on this fight. And, and His Excellency has invested a lot of money in this fight to make it happen. Let's have the courtesy to give the world something to talk about. You don't have to talk shit, by the way. But you can talk more than two words. Do you know what I mean? But that is his style. Maybe that is his personality. He's a, he's a brilliant fighter, but, you know, I just, I just feel like, to be honest, he's one of those people, right, better be of, it's not, I don't think it is his personality, because when you see certain interviews, you have to get it out of him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like, even, like, Jamie Ward and the guys from Matrim, once they play a few games with him and loosen him up a little bit, you can get him going, okay. and it's the same, like, I'm, I reckon... That better be like Bivol has actually got quite an engaging personality. Look at Crawford. It's like people like that. A lot of people said, "Oh, Crawford's got no personality. Crawford's a bit boring." But actually, the reality is, is that when you start showing Crawford's true personality, it's actually really funny and really entertaining. Um, in in regards to uh, Bivol and better be for better be there's this fight with Canelo that potentially in the in. In the future, look, Canelo said after his last fight, he was asked a question, Would you fight Bertabiev? He said, I'd fight the winner, mm. why didn't be Bivol? In your eyes, as a promoter, somebody who's going to look at future fights, a fighter mm. doesn't look at the next fight, are you looking at potentially a Canelo rematch in the future? Yeah, I think that Canelo will always want to rematch Bivol because he will really want to avenge that defeat. 
I'm not sure how keen Reynoso would be. Okay. But if the fight was for the undisputed 175 pound world championship, mm. that adds another kind of carrot to it because that would give Canelo another undisputed victory at 175. So, look, if, if Bivol can do the business on Saturday, he's in a tremendous position because he's one of the biggest stars in the sport. He would have had victories over Canelo Alvarez and Artur Betsebiev. You're putting him pound for pound top three. Do you know what I mean? And there's, there's a lot on the line. Uh, Eddie, I want you to sort of, not even shut down the notion that's getting played out right now about Anthony Joshua, but there's this, you know, certain people are saying, look, maybe Anthony Joshua made a lot of money, the hunger's not there. Carl Froch has alluded to it as a silk pyjama effect that this made so much money. Yeah. You sit with him, so I need to ask you this question. I just find Is it bizarre. Like, do you, like, he doesn't need to fight. He's desperate to fight, desperate to win. He's hungrier than ever. He's putting more work in than ever before. And by the way, do you think he wants to be scraping himself up off the floor at Wembley in front of 98,000 to try and win the fight. Do you not think he could have, like even Carl Froch, who let's be honest, and listen I've got personal great history with Carl Froch, but I would have to say he's an Anthony Joshua hater. Mm. He is. If Carl Froch is not prepared to give Joshua the credit of the heart he showed in that fight then he's a hater. Like, because you, you talk on one hand about this guy who doesn't want it anymore, but, like, but yet he's training harder than he's ever trained. He's getting battered in that ring, and he's getting up, and he's holding on for dear life, and he's trying to find a way back into the fight. Then he finds a way back into the fight, then he goes for the kill, then he gets chinned. Why don't you just say, AJ was poor, but I've got to say, fucking hell, fair play. He showed some nuts because he did show unbelievable heart. Anybody who's not got an agenda will say, fair play. Like, I know you box shit, but fuck, you never stop trying, mate. Right? So, I'm telling you now. Like, and, and, and by the way, when we talk about the rematch, the decision will tell you everything about what he wants. Okay. Because... If he didn't want it anymore, and if he had silk pajamas on, he'd, he'd fight like he'd just take a load of money for a few easy fights. He wants to rematch Daniel Dubois because he wants to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. He wants to go back into the fire. Do you know what I mean? He don't want to. Oh, I don't. Oh, that was a tough night. This is not for me. This boxing lark. He's going fucking stick me back in. Do you know what I mean? And that's very difficult when you're looking after him because you've got to make sure it's the right decision. And he will make the, the decision himself. And it'll be up to me, 258, Ben, all of the team to give our honest opinion to him. And then he will go, thank you very much, everybody. This is what I'm going to do. And all he wants right now is to, is to rematch Daniel Dubois. Is this a different mindset, different mentality from Anthony Joshua when you saw him against Usyk, the losses against Usyk or Ruiz? Not really. He wanted to jump straight back in. Every fighter does. But it's down to you, the team, to help make the right decision. And it's not just the decision. Like, people keep saying, oh, we could have two or three warm-up fights. Fuck that. We've had them. We had four of them after, after Usyk. If we ain't ready now, we're never going to be ready. And the one thing that AJ said to me is, and this is, you know, after the fight, I'll be honest, in my mind, I was thinking, maybe, maybe we should, you know, wait. Maybe we should wait for Fury Usyk. He was like, wait for what? He said, I don't want to wait till December, till even I make a decision. He says, and what happens if someone gets injured in the build-up and that fight becomes March? And then what happens if I want to fight the winner of that or loser in that? And they're injured, and we can't fight till September, October. I've been out of the ring a year. And I'm like, but like he has in his, the palm of his hand a shot at the world heavyweight title. Do you know how difficult it is to get a shot at the world heavyweight title? Like you could have to take these three or four fights, and then in three or four, you're in no man's land. You ain't got a fight. You, do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't think there's a bad decision. But when, when you talk to him, it changes your own mind about what he should do. Because it, it, he speaks, you know, he, he knows the game. And he's like, I can beat Dubois. I know I can. And I've got the fight. And if I beat him, I'm three-time world heavyweight champion. I'm actually in the same position than I was about a month ago. You know? But it's going to be very tough. And he's got to get it right.
I think with Anthony Joshua, he gets sort of the micro, uh, the uh, magnif- magnification put on him a lot more than any other. But everyone's boxer. experts, aren't they? Um, Do you know what I mean? 